This is Monty. He's a 12-year-old golden doodle, and we see him every eight weeks for grooming. I'm bathing him today in our Dirty Dog Shampoo. Then I blow dry him with my high velocity dryer. I'm using a noose with a pool noodle on his back end to keep him stable. Monty recently underwent surgery to remove part of his lung that had cancer and he is currently going through chemotherapy. So I'm going a little bit slower with him today. I'm taking his body down today in my number three and then I shave out his paw pads using my 30 blade. After that I clip his nails and then I trim up his face and then I do some blending using my chunkers. I trim up the ends of his ears. I sprayed him in our jelly bean cologne and Monty is all finished looking like a new man. Monty has been coming to me for several years. He's a really good dog. One side of him is shaved down from where he got his surgery. So today I'm going to groom him and do the best that I can to blend that area without actually shaving him down completely. So I have my dirty dog shampoo in my soap dispensing nozzle and I'm going to turn it so it's at soap. Don't be concerned about the brown stuff that you saw in the background on the bathtub. That was just mud. So once I've turned it to soap, I'm going to shampoo his body all over. I did turn on the nozzle first to make sure that the water was warm. When you're wearing gloves, it's very easy to not be able to tell the temperature of the water. So just make sure that when you are wearing gloves and bathing a dog, that you check the temperature first. So this is nice because I don't have to fully rinse the body first with water. I can go straight to shampoo, but I absolutely do rub this in afterwards. I'm going to speed up the bath. So I'm using the Save Your Fur nozzle now. I'm going to use that to rinse his face before I use the Tearless Shampoo. First I'm going to rinse off my hands because I do have Dirty Dog Shampoo on my hands and I don't want to burn his eyes. Then I'm going to fully rinse his face. When I'm doing that, it's easy with doodles because they have hair on their ears that keep their ears down. So it's really easy not to get water in their ears. Even if you do get water in their ears, it's not the end of the world. You can dry them out after with a cotton pad. So I'm just making sure that the face is completely wet before I add my shampoo. The Tearless Shampoo that I'm going to use today is made by BioGroom. It is their Econo Shampoo. So I'm pouring that all over the face and ears, avoiding the eyes. I'm going to scrub it in after and make sure that all around the eyes is clean, but I don't pour the liquid into the eye. Even though it is tearless, it can still be dangerous and burn the eyes, so you just want to avoid the eyes at all costs when you're shampooing a face. So I shampoo the body first, and then I do the face last, and then the first thing I will do is rinse the face. I do this on purpose to make sure that no shampoo is sitting on the eyeball for any period of time. And also, you want to make sure that you're rinsing the face first because you have to remember that the shampoo is going to go down through the body after you've rinsed the face. So if you rinse the whole body first and then did the face at the end, you would have to go back over the body. It's funny whenever I am teaching somebody how to bathe a dog because they think that bathing a dog is very straightforward. And while it can be at home, there is a certain process that you would like to follow that will make it easier and safer for your pet. So people are always surprised by all of the steps that I take during a bath. I'm making sure to rinse the face very, very well, going over it even if I don't have to. I just want to make sure that there's absolutely no soap sitting on his eyes, so you can never over rinse. I rinse his entire head down using the Save Your Fur nozzle, ears and all, a little bit on the neck as well, but then I'm going to switch back to my other nozzle. I'm going to switch it to water and rinse the rest of his body just because it is stronger so I can make sure that I'm getting enough soap off of his body. So 
So now that he's rinsed, I'm going to towel dry him before I dry him. You can see that his back end is shaking a little bit. That's because he has some weakness in that area as he is an older dog. So there is something special I do for him while I'm drying him to make sure that he's stable and comfortable. He's not cold, the water was very warm, and my shop is warm as well, so he's not shaking because he's cold. So now that I've dried him with my towel, I'm going to switch over to my absorber. An absorber is just like a sham wow, only a little bit better. Golden Doodles have a thick coat, so I want to remove as much water as possible before I start blow drying him. So the absorber helps me to do that. I'm going to use it all over his body. And you kind of use it like a squeegee and you grab the fur with your hands. It's not necessarily the same as using a towel. You don't really want to scrub or you won't get much out of the absorber. So you're just grabbing, squeezing, you can scrub a little bit, but really the squeezing the hair is going to be the best way to remove as much water from the coat as you can. I'm hoping when I have my Amazon store set up that I'll be able to have the absorber in it for you guys so I can direct you all to one place. So this is a noose that has a pool noodle on it. This one specifically is not a pool noodle. It's something I just found in my house that is very similar. So I'm going to put it around his belly and this will help keep him stable while I'm blow drying him. The reason why there is a pool noodle on it or what resembles one in this particular video is because you want to make sure that it's cushioned around his waist. That skin under there is very thin and fragile so you don't want hard plastic pulling on his skin the entire time I'm drying him. It can leave a mark and it could also cause internal injuries if you're not careful. So always make sure you have something cushioned in that area. Their neck is not the same as their waist. Their neck is a lot tougher and they don't tend to pull that much on their neck because then it would restrict their breathing. So they stop and they pull back. In this case, Monty's a really good dog and he doesn't do any of those things, but it could happen. So particularly, I like using a pool noodle, but you would have to get a noose that is fabric and you just cut the noose, you put it through the noodle, and then you sew the noose back up. And this is a great way to help keep your dog standing and keep them comfortable. So I'm gonna speed up his drying here. I'm using my canine high velocity dryer on him. And of course he's wearing his ear protection, which is called a happy hoodie, to make sure that it's not too loud while I'm drying him. That way it keeps him happier. So halfway through the dry, I spray him down with the Stuff for Dogs, which is a conditioning treatment. This is diluted, and this will make his coat nice and soft, but also speed up the drying process. I'm then going to take my pin brush, and I'm going to brush that through his coat to make sure that it gets down to the skin. And can we all take a moment just to admire Monty and the fact that he literally just stands there and does not care and lets me do whatever I want. We love dogs like this, and I do actually have quite a few like this, but Monty has to be one of the best. So now that his body is dry, we're going to dry the face. In this case, because he is a doodle, we would like to use something stronger than a handheld dryer. So I am going to use a high velocity dryer, but this is my little dog high velocity dryer. It's not as strong and it's not nearly as loud, so he is comfortable with it. While he doesn't absolutely love it, it won't cause him any harm. The Happy Hoodie is great because as it sits on his head, it actually absorbs a ton of water, which makes the drying process on his face and ears a lot quicker. Now we're gonna switch over to our slicker brush we want to brush the hair and make it soft and puffy. And the reason why is not only for the look and for the haircut afterwards, but if we brush it through, it's actually a lot quicker to dry. So after we've brushed this area completely with a slicker brush, we're going to finish off the blow dry with a handheld dryer. So now it's time for the haircut. So I'm shaving Monty today in my three and three quarter skip tooth blade. I love skip tooths and I love the buttercup blade. They cut 
like butter through a doodle coat. So I usually start from the shoulder blades or behind the neck and I just work my way down. It's important when shaving a dog that you make sure that there aren't any lines, especially when you're shaving the sides of a dog. So what I do is I actually go down on an angle. A lot of groomers go straight down on this part of the dog and I don't find that it looks nice. I find that it leaves a lot of lines. So a secret for mine is to go down on an angle on both sides of the dog. Someone once told me that you want to go in big strokes in order to avoid lines. I don't actually think that that's true after grooming for 10 years. I think that you can do little strokes and it won't cause lines. It doesn't matter the length of your strokes, it matters in the direction of which you are shaving. So now when it comes to the waistline, where the back leg meets the stomach, I do shave down. You don't want to shave at an angle in that spot because it's very easy to catch that skin right in that one tiny spot area. It happens to a lot of groomers. So in that spot, shave down. Do not shave on the side. Unless you're shaving underneath the belly, then it's okay. But make sure that you're shaving on the side in that one spot. And then you're just going to shave down the legs. There is one special thing that you need to avoid when you're shaving the legs. So your dog has a pocket in this area, which is where the skin and the bone meet. And there's actually a little part where you can take your hands and stick it behind that area. So the reason I do that is so that when I'm shaving down, I don't actually slice over where the bone is. If you go over to your dog now, you can feel that area very easily and then you'll know what I'm talking about. So I do the same thing when I shave the inside of the leg as well. Always make sure your fingers are in that spot so that you do not cut the bone. And then I have another little trick that I do as well if you don't want to hold your hands in that spot. Um, you can grab the opposite leg. So if you grab the opposite leg, you should be able to easily shave the inside of the other leg. Normally when you shave the inside of a leg, you're just going to lift the leg all the way up and then go underneath with your head and the clipper to shave. But in this case, Monty is an older dog and I don't really want to do that to him. So I find it's easier and keeps them more stable if you just lift up the opposite leg, but not too high that you're causing the dog pain, and then shave on the inside. Just be weary of that one spot that I had just mentioned. When you're going over it, don't actually dig into the skin, just kind of shave slightly over that one spot. You're not going to cut the actual bone, but what I mean by that is if your clipper, especially a skip tooth blade, is going over that area where there is a bone protruding out, it's much easier to catch the skin. So now we're getting to the elbow. It's also a spot you want to be careful of, not so much because you're going to injure them, but I find dogs really don't like when you hit their elbow with the blade. The vibration, I think, does not feel nice in that area. I guess it's similar to our own elbows. It doesn't feel nice if we hit them too hard. So you just want to be careful when you're going over that spot. I usually just straight, shave straight down on the legs. And you can do the same thing with the front legs by lifting one while you're shaving the other. Now when you go to shave the chest, I usually just use the same blade and shave over the chest. But a lot of dogs can have cowlicks in this area where their hair grows in the opposite direction. And if you shave with the same blade, you can make what looks like a bald spot. My clients don't seem to care. I usually end up using the same blade. It looks a little bit more bald. But if you would prefer to avoid this, you can do this by one of two ways. You can either shave in the opposite direction, so shave up instead of shaving down. Or you can take a little bit of a longer blade and put it on your clipper just to shave that one spot. Now when I'm going to shave under the neck, I take the noose off and I lift the dog's head up holding with my fingers to keep the snout up and then I shave down. You really want to try to stretch out this area because they do have folds in there. That's what I'm poking at. You want to avoid those folds, especially when shaving with a skip tooth blade or a very short blade because it's very easy to catch those in the clipper and cut them. Every dog has these folds, but some dogs are worse than others. Older dogs have more folds than the younger dogs, so you just want to be careful. In this case, with Monty's haircut, I'm shaving right underneath his chin all the way down, and then I'm going to lift his ears up and shave under there. 
That way we get easy airflow to the inside of his ears. He doesn't need thick hair under there because they're hidden by his ears anyway. So now that his body is shaved, I'm going to go ahead and shave the sanitary areas. So using my 10 blade, I'm going to shave the very tip of his genitals. I'm not shaving the entire groin and stomach with the 10 blade. I used to do that in the past and I was taught to, but I find it does cause irritation. So I like to use a little bit of a longer blade. In this case, I'm using a seven. And I just lift his leg up and shave towards me. You can also shave towards the inside of his belly, but it's safer if you shave towards yourself. Unless there's some matting, then you can shave the opposite direction. I've been doing this for so long that I know I'm not going to cut the dog, but for a beginner, I would suggest just shaving towards yourself. And even using a five or a four blade instead of a seven would be ideal. Of course, if the dog is matted, you won't have an option and you're going to have to use a seven or a 10. So just try to be careful and try not to dig into the skin. Most owners want this area to be nice and clean for obvious reasons. Now using my 10 blade, I'm going to shave his bum. You wanna keep that nice and short. I shave up and down. I'm making sure not to cut the bum hole. It would be very easy to do that because it does protrude out a little bit. So just make sure you're not digging. There's a little secret for dogs that are unstable or dogs that don't wanna stand while you're shaving. And I put my knee underneath their belly to keep them stable and then I continue to shave. As you can see, Monty is trying to sit a little bit. The last thing that you want is for your dog to sit at the same time that you're shaving because that could most certainly cause an injury. Now I'm gonna switch over to my 30 blade and I'm gonna shave the inside of his paw pads. So at the top of the pad, I usually shave up. I don't shave down. If you shave down, you run the risk of cutting them. And then using the edges of my clipper or the blade, I shave the outside and the inside of the pad. Some groomers like to go in and scoop. I don't feel comfortable going in and scoop. I feel as though I might cut the dog. So I like to go in on the edge of my blade, which I find in my own experience to be the safest way for me. Everybody does something differently and it doesn't mean that they're doing it wrong. So try it out and see whatever works best for you. It's much easier to injure a dog using scissors in this area than it is a clipper. So just be advised that it could happen. For a beginner, you might want to use a 10 blade to do the inside of the paw pads. You're a lot less likely to injure the dog. I think most people do learn on the 10 blades, but the 30 blade obviously just makes it much more clean. So now I'm going to stand my dog up and using my straight shears, I'm just going to find little spots that need to be tidied. Usually these spots are the elbows and right by the paw pads as it goes down towards the bottom of the leg, potentially around the groin. Usually it's just the legs that need to be tidied a little bit. These are certain spots that the dogs don't necessarily like when you use the clippers because they don't like the vibration. And then I'm going to round the feet. So rounding the feet is pretty simple. It's easiest to do if the dog keeps their foot on the ground. If they do lift their paws or dance, it can make it more difficult. It might be easier for a beginner to use rounded shears on the feet to make the area round. I was trained on straights, so I find it easy to make them round using straights or curved. It doesn't really matter. And you're going to just complete these steps on both sides of the dog's body. If you want to make the paws look a little bit nicer and a little bit more round, you can take your slicker brush, brush the hair up, and then use your scissors just to trim the long parts on the top of the paw. I usually take my fingers and just try to pull out any little spots. Sometimes there might be some matting in there that you have to cut out. Some groomers will brush out the matting, but I find that they find that that area is very painful for them to brush out, so I just cut the mats out. It's easier for them. So again, just taking my scissors and cutting all along the edges to make sure that everything has a smooth finish. So now we're gonna get into blending the area that was shaved on him. So you can see the lines where it's longer. So I'm just gonna take my thinning shears and trim as much as possible all along those areas. It's pretty simple. You can also take a comb and comb the area up and then continue to trim with straight shears if you wanted. I learned how to do that in hairdressing but it's definitely easier just to use your thinning shears and just go around the edges. Know that it's not going to be perfect. You won't be able to blend it in completely, but it will look a lot better at the end. 
A lot of dogs go through surgery when they get spayed or neutered or they have shave spots in the front of their legs where they had their IV. So this is just an easy way to blend it in. Shape the dog down short, but not necessarily as short as those shaved spots. And then take your thinning shears just to blend it in. So now we're gonna clip his nails. Monty gets his nails clipped at home very regularly, so not a lot of it needs to come off, just the tips. So as you can see, he's obviously very well behaved. In this case, his nails are black, but I can tell where the quick is. After so long of doing this, you just kind of know where they are. But you can see if you flip the nail underneath, you can see where the quick ends. Not on all dogs, but on Monty, I can. So I'm just taking a little bit off each nail until I can see where the quick is so I know when to stop. Some dogs, if they have black nails, they will have a black dot right in the middle of their nail. And once you see that dot, you don't want to go any further. And then his back nails are actually white or uh, tan so I can see exactly where the quick is and where I have to stop. He only needs very little clipped off of his back feet. Dogs tend to have shorter back nails than they do on their front paws. Now I'm taking my Chris Christensen coral brush and I'm going to brush through his tail, his ears, and his face. This is a great brush for brushing doodle coats and removing matting. It's definitely my favorite one. I usually use this first and then I go over them with a comb after. And now I'm going to trim the tail. So I'm just holding all the hair down and then with my straights I'm going to cut straight across. You can feel where their tail ends and where the hair ends so you don't have to be concerned that you're going to cut them. And then I hold the tip of the tail and I brush it down using my brush or a comb and you can see the areas that are long underneath. You want to trim those spots so that it's even. So I don't trim it too short, I just kind of round it and that way when the dog's tail lies down it doesn't look like it has long parts sticking out. So I'm shaving the top of his head with my O comb, which is a 5'8". Whenever I do the top of a dog's head, I usually leave it one length longer than the body. It just looks nicer and it can be easily blended. But doodles also have, most doodles, not all doodles, they tend to have a bone at the very top of their head that can protrude out. So if you shave it too short, they kind of look like they have a cone head afterwards. So you do want to leave it a little bit longer than the body. Feel the area first and see if the dog that you're working on does in fact have this. And if they do, try to leave the head a little bit longer or scissor it a bit so that it's not so noticeable. So Monty has some mats in his ears, but fortunately his ears are very thick. So I'm actually just going to find the mat. I'm going to hold my fingers down where the skin is so I don't cut his skin. And then I'm going to just cut the mat right out. Because of how thick his ears are, I can do this without noticing. You won't see any holes in his haircut. You don't want to do this with hair that's lying on the top of the ear because then you will notice. Only if the mats are inside the ear and you can lift up a layer of hair first before getting to them. That way you'll never notice them. And then you just simply brush it out. It's a lot easier on the dog. And as you can see, you can't tell that I cut out any mats. So now we're getting it to the inside of the ear. I trim it with scissors. I don't offer ear plucking unless the dog has a medical condition and their vet recommends that the ear get plucked. I don't like plucking ears. I've had a bad experience with it. A lot of dogs get hematomas and a lot of dogs are actually very afraid of it and I don't really blame them. So I don't pluck ears. When you shave the top of the head, you're gonna notice a little bit of longer hair at the top of the ear. So some people use thinning shears, which is fine as well, but I just take my scissors and I cut that hair up so that you can't tell and it's nice and blended. And I'm just gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So you'll just notice that there's hair above the ear that's a little bit longer, and you just wanna take that down and trim it to the same length of the top of the head. That way it's nice and blended into the ear. Now I'm just gonna brush the face with my Chris Christensen brush to make sure that there's no matting before I trim that area. And then after that, I'll switch to my metal comb just to make sure that there are no mats. Okay, so now it's time to trim the face. So with my scissors closed, I usually lift the hair up that goes underneath when they lick into their mouth. That's the first spot that I trim. That hair can get very gross and you wanna make sure it's nice and short. You can also use a 10 blade in this area. I prefer to use scissors. Then I lift the hair up from their mouth and I make sure that I get the hair underneath their lip line on their bottom. Sometimes that gets very filled with gunk and food, so you wanna make sure that's all trimmed up. 
you can see that I'm cutting out some gross stuff in his beard. So I'm just cleaning it up nice and then once I'm finished with cleaning up that stuff um, I'm going to go to his eyes. So you can use thinning shears or straight shears in the eyes, whatever you feel more comfortable with. If your dog moves a lot, you might want to use thinning shears. Um, they're less dangerous. I know Monty and I know he's not going to move, so I'm going to use my straights. So I usually trim on the side for both the corner of the eyes, and then I trim up with my scissors pointing up towards the head when I shave the middle of the eyes, and that way I avoid causing any lines in that area. And now using my straight shears, I'm just going to cut around to his hairline where his ear meets his head. And I just kind of trim on a curved edge so that it's nice and round. I wasn't able to get the best tape of this, but I'll do better on my next video hopefully. And then there's going to be hair that meets the corner of the eye to the bottom of the chin that's going to be a little bit longer. So first I tidy that up with my straights and then I'm going to go back and blend it. So don't be worried if you have like some chunky lines in these areas because you will be able to blend this in. So now I'm taking my chunkers. I love to use chunkers on doodles and I'm just blending in those certain spots. Chunkers have thick teeth and they have a lot of space between each tooth. It does a good job on some coats, but you will have to switch to your thinning shears to get a better blend. So I use clippers on the top of the head and the bottom of the chin. So the spots where I did not use the clippers is now where I am blending with the chunkers. So that's the side of the face where the eye is all the way down to the bottom of the jawline. Now I'm going to switch to my thinning shears. The teeth are much smaller and less space between each tooth and this is going to give us a more fine blending. And I'm just doing the exact same thing as I did with my chunkers and with my straights in the same spots. This is just going to soften up the look. So now I'm going to trim the bottom of his ears. I'm just taking about an inch off the bottom and then you flip the ear inside out and the hair at the very bottom of the ear will be a little bit longer. So you want to trim that a little bit on an angle so you can make it round and you'll do the exact same thing on the other side. You might not get the ears even the first time around but you can always take more off. Sometimes I have to step back to take a look to see if they're both even. It can be hard to tell and sometimes dogs will tilt their head slightly one way so you won't be able to notice. It'll look as though they're even or it'll look like they're uneven when they're actually not. And that's it. Monty is completed. He looks really good. So this is my three and three quarter I guess kind of puppy cut type look for a doodle.